and also for you. Let us pray. Threefold one, relationship in unity, love given and received through all the ages long. Give us that unity which is not enclosed but alive and accepting with the open heart of love. Through Jesus Christ, the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> from the book of Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All of these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Here is the reading. Thanks be Spirit, Spirit, open our hearts and minds. minds. The psalm we will read responsibly by half verse. Let God arise and let his enemies be shattered. Let, let those who be clearly before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the grass melts the fire, so let the wicked perish in the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name, rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God, God is holy God. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in tribes. O God, when you went forth before the people, when you when marched march through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence, presence of God and the God of Sinai. At the presence of God and the God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land according to spirit. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made a for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing, Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his, voice, his, his mighty voice. voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places. The God of Israel gives his strength and power to his people. And blessed be God. Here is an epistle from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory, which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, 
so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves and keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Here ends the reading. This is your Lord, open our hearts and minds. <laughs> The Bible contains a few references to this event, but each story is different. The Gospel of Luke says this, Jesus assured the disciples that the scriptures foretold his story. Then he opened their minds to understand those scriptures. After this, he led them out of town a few miles, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them, and while he was blessing them. He withdrew from them. 
The book of the Acts of the Apostles that we heard as our first reading this morning tells a, another story. It says Jesus assured the disciples with these words. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And a third reference in the Gospel of John tells of Jesus' departure in the words that he spoke before he was arrested and crucified. The Gospel of John doesn't even include a separate story about, the, uh, the, the, about Jesus' departure after resurrection. Why such different stories? Maybe the event was simply beyond words, beyond description, too mysterious to recount in writing. Perhaps the disciples were too upset, traumatized to document the details. They had given years of their lives to follow Jesus. And separation from their beloved teacher was too much to bear perhaps. A teacher from whom they learned so much. A teacher who had changed their lives forever. And we can all relate to the importance of teachers. All of us have a story of a teacher who changed our lives forever. Yesterday I attended a meeting where we were asked to share a story of a teacher who made a lasting impression. Many of us share decades-old stories and memories of influential teachers recounting events as though they happened yesterday. One of us talked about a mentor who spent such a huge amount of extra time and care and effort and patience to teach his trade. Another spoke of a coach who emphasized team over winning. Another talked about a persuasive teacher who compelled students to think for themselves, preparing them for life. Yet another remembered with such fondness an eccentric teacher, a beloved, uh, very individual and colorful personality who created a safe space for students to be themselves, accept themselves, and celebrate their individuality. And yet another spoke tenderly of a very observant teacher who saw in every student the potential that no one else could see. Such teachers come into our lives and then leave. But it's not their absence we think of. What stays with us is the impact they had on our minds, our hearts, and our ways of being in the world. Jesus was that kind of teacher for the disciples, and he is that kind of teacher for us. His time on earth ended, but his teachings continue to flourish. Sad as the disciples might have been, they understood that the mystery of his leaving was an invitation to step into a new season of their lives, a new season to explore his teachings to carry them into the world, to sustain them, and to live his teachings with conscious effort. A new season to be unified with Jesus in a new way. Well, as I've listened to the rain all of this week, the cycle, the, the cycle of the seasons came to mind. 
Spring renewal brings rain and blossoms and the bounty of various plants. And as we observe the seasons, we remember our connections with Ina and our gratitude to God for the blessings of creation. In a similar way, the cycle of the church year reminds us to observe the seasons of our souls, which bring opportunities to nurture our connections with our Creator and harvest the bounty to serve others. So on this Sunday, we close the season of Easter and look forward to celebrating Pentecost. The longest season of the church year, Pentecost brings to our awareness the constant presence of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> our bridge to Christ. <coughs> Living in us, the Holy Spirit inspires us, breathing life into our faith and our relationship with the divine. Like the disciples, we are called to be conscious of this gift and how it can work in and through us to further our mission to be the love of God and to feel the love of God. While we ponder the mystery of Easter and the end of Christ's earthly ministry, we remember that Jesus says, I am in you and you are in me. With faith in this connection, we reflect on the potential for spiritual transformation that this next season could bring. It's exciting. Pentecost carries messages of unity. We are unified in the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is be aware and open and available. The Holy Spirit beckons us to live in conscious connection with God's love. This is what Christ consciousness means for us as humans, to be unified with divine love. Such unity may seem like a distant dream, a naive wish in a world where daily crises shatter the idea of peace on earth. Separated from their teacher, the disciples probably felt this too. But they also realized that crisis is actually an opportunity to unify. Crisis shows us where and how we are separated from ourselves, from God, from creation, from other people. This is the message we share with our youth as we gather to celebrate graduations this time of year. At the end of one chapter and the beginning of another, we tell them to remember what their teachers taught them, to remember how they learned to think on their own and find their own way. All of the lessons. And we remember that God gives us all a most wise and patient teacher, time. Through time, the divine shows us that each season of our lives brings endings that give way to beginnings with new lessons and new opportunities. All we have to do is be aware open and available. Living in Christ consciousness, we can embrace new chapters to find unity with ourselves and unity with God's love. This is the foundation upon which we can build everything else. Let us pray. Threefold one, relationship and unity, love given and received through all the ages long. Give us that unity which is not enclosed, but alive and accepting with the open heart of love. Through Jesus Christ, the glory of God.
Amen. Let us stand to sing our affirmation of faith.
we offer our prayers with joy for the church throughout the world, for all who celebrate Christ's glorious resurrection, that we may know his risen presence today and always. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Elizabeth Honolulu, the Reverend David Erlach and Mrs. Carrie Hashitati, the Reverend Imelda Padasa Dom, the Reverend Mafi Baka, Lalo and Mrs. Elisani Bakemilalo, the Reverend Peter Fan and Mrs. Doris Lamb Fan. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in the province of the West Indies. For God's holy people, we pray. Dominique, Fuji, and family, 
for peace in his passing.
Um, we are also, of course, as we've been announcing, planning our annual bazaar coming up on September 23rd. Please be thinking of what you'd like to plant, uh, what you might have that you could contribute for a thrift shop, white elephant, or boutique item, or a silent auction item. All of the information on who to contact is, is in your announcement. We want to say thank you for everything that everyone does for us. I was out and about on campus last night and saw Kathy doing, doing the, the, the leaf blowing. It was lovely. <laughs> fresh blowing, freshly blown, freshly rained. It looks great. Um, we are, uh, of course, continuing Bible study, although I will say um, we will have Bible study next, um, it says May 12th, but um, we missed that in our announcement sheet. We will have Bible study this coming Friday, but then for the week after, I will be gone, so we will not have Bible study that week. Are there any other announcements this morning? Will the peace of Christ be always with you? Also As we enter the time of Holy Communion together, let us join together in saying our offertory sentence. We come with offerings of our time, our money, our strength, our pleasure in one another's company. All these we bring to God in dedication and for use in the glory of the realm of God.
creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us, a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, joy, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with the Blessed Virgin Mary and Saint Joseph, with King Kamehameha IV and Queen Emma, with Queen Liliuo Kalani, and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home.
be sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. peace. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All who seek God are welcome at this table. Mm -hmm.
Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ. May God, the creator whose love raised Jesus from the dead, open our hearts to receive and share God's infinite love. May God, the Son, who returned from death in holy mystery, cleanse our hearts in the living waters of our baptisms. May God, the Holy Spirit, who inspires us with every breath, flow through us with hope, joy, and peace. And may we be blessed by God, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, now and forever. Amen. Amen.